Morning on the show, we got a young man who wrote a book called How to Become a Millionaire. I got that part right there. And then I read the rest, Mr. Paul. Oh, let me make sure I said the last name, Aline. Aline. Aline, okay. I got that out the book too, because he, he broke down how to say his name in the books before it even got started. I like that. Give him give him instructions. Um, but then the part right here. If a black guy can do it, so can you. Is this the spark controversy? Uh, yeah, I think based on what's going on in the world right now, particularly in America, where there's a lot of conversation about race and, you know, Black Lives Matter, I wanted to come out with a message that had some positivity to it, meaning that, hey, if you decide that you want to build a life that you want, hey, this is the way that you do it. Okay, because when we first saw it, we were like, wait, is this implying that if you're black, you can't be a millionaire? And then we looked at stats and the likelihood of somebody black becoming a millionaire uh, when it comes to other races, yeah, as a percentage point, yeah, there's a little bit of a, um, diff there's some difficulty there, right? right? So I saw that and I'm like, oh, I wish that was in there too, So because I don't want somebody to see the book and get the wrong impression yeah, the about the, the message. Yeah, the you know message, I mean? the title, you know, it sounds controversial, maybe a little bit self-deprecating or self-hating. Right, 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 right. But it was really meant to say that, you know, the odds are really stacked against you as an African-American in the country of becoming a millionaire. But the way you have to think about it, you have to say, well, I was made to be somebody and I was made to do something. Mm. And so you have to go inside yourself and say, okay, what is it that I can do okay. that I can bring value to society? Okay. Now, when you wrote the book, did you have a particular pers people, person, individuals, uh, creed, color, uh, sex in mind when you did it? Or did you just start writing from the heart saying, I want to write a book about how you can become a millionaire too? Uh, I think my book was meant for a wider audience right. because I think everyone needs money. Money affects the way that you live. It affects the choices that you can make. But the reason I wrote it from my perspective is that uh, many times you're labeled and put into a box and I don't want to be contained in a box. Just because I'm black doesn't mean I can't do other things. Mm -hmm. And so it was really meant for people to you know, escape that way of thinking just because I'm black, I'm female, I'm Muslim, I'm you know, transgendered, I can't have certain things in society. I don't buy into that. Okay. So when did you realize you could become a millionaire? Okay. What age? Uh, I think, you know, I grew up in inner city New York. And as you grow up, when you're growing up, I don't think most kids are aware of I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm a have, I'm a have not. But as you get older and you see your friends who have different experiences and where they live, you didn't get exposed to, wait a minute, uh, you know, I'm not really where other people are. Right. And so you decide that, you know, and then also growing up with a single mother, realizing, seeing how hard she worked to get me where I am, I realized that, hey, you know, I want to have uh, financial independence such that I can build the life that I want. Okay. Uh, you are already in the corporate world. A situation like this, to uh, give this information, so so to speak, you didn't have to do it. What, what made you say, I want to get out of this world that I'm in, and what I would like to do is give information that I've learned along the way to try sure. to help assist others? Uh, you know, life is really about a journey, and so you're writing your own story of your life, and so when you look back, as you're approaching the end of your life, you want to look back and say, you know, how did I improve society? How did I add value? How did I change someone's life and make it better? And I figured, you know, you just use the tools that you have. And so writing a book, I'm naturally an introvert. I think that's, you know, a lot of thoughts, you know, flow in our minds and we just have to find a way to express them. And so this was an opportunity for me to do that. Do you think the book will be, uh, older folks will be more inclined to read it or millennials? And I'll ask you that again, going back to my original conversation. I the millennials in the room seem to gravitate toward the book real quick because you know, it has certain language in it right. that sparks their imagination. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's very explicit language right. and it speaks, it speaks to their millennial heart. Don't be offended by my millennial friend. Uh, but they, you know, you know, certain passages in it really, really appeal to them. So I'm like, I wonder if this book will appeal more to one age group of people sure. uh, than the other. And then I, and then I was even saying that to myself, will it be more of a black person other than a white person? I, I, I wonder these things. Sure, I mean, the language, there's some strong language in yeah. the book, but it's really meant to generate an emotional response. I think most people have two versions of themselves. There's the side that you show to society, yeah. and there's the, the side that you have these thoughts inside your mind. Mm -hmm. And so when I put that language in there, it's like, well, this is what I was actually thinking as I was going through these things. Well, I'm black. I'm a man, mm. you know, I'm from the inner city, yeah, and yeah. then you just expletive that, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that, that's the way you roll, and right, so right. you just use that, the, those negative emotions or those negative things said about you to, you know, like I said, use that for positive energy to uh, build a life that you want. All right. It has, and maybe this is my interpretation, it has somewhat of a, a, 
a hip hop appeal to me. Oh, sure. You know, and, and then I skimmed through it. I didn't read it all the way, sure. but I skimmed through it. And it just seemed to have a, a hip hop appeal to it. Sure. Now, I have to be honest, because of my business and what I am, those kind of things will, unfortunately or fortunately, hit me first, appeal to me first, sure. and get me ingratiated in it. You know sure. what I mean? I don't know if that also could have been some motivation there, or if when you were writing that, it just happened to be that's who you are as a person. Uh, so it naturally just comes out. Right. I mean, I think each of us are, are just a, a culmination of all of our experiences. Yeah. And so yeah. when I wrote that, that's just how I was living it and you know how I experienced it. And just, you know, I have a reference to um, Little John in the book, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know and, I saw the 50 Cent one. Right, right. Yeah. And so you just see how these guys have done certain things. I have athletes in there. Mm -hmm. It's the public figures that really affect or influence the way that you see things. And it's really, what are the lessons that you can take from those people? Because you don't have those skills. I can't play a sport. I can't rhyme. So it's like, what can I do? What, 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 what gifts did God give me? Let me ask you this. I, we don't get taught in school. We learn a lot of things in school. A lot of the things that we probably should be taught in school, we do not learn. We get a, we get a, a misguided look at history as well. Uh, if you could be a, a, one of the folks that is, that are involved with the you know the books that they have in school, uh, would you institute some kind of program where they learn about money? Because I think we lack that in the education of people. We got adults that still don't know how to pay bills. Sure. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, they t don't understand, you know, the rate when it comes to credit cards and sure. all these things that seem to be basic to some communities, but to others is a complete blur. Uh, it seems to me, and I'm just curious as, as with your thought process on that, shouldn't that be something that is a part of school as well, learning <laughs> about money so we can create these young millionaires? Yeah, I think that's important, and I, I think what your focusing on is money management, mm -hmm. meaning that, okay, well, I have this amount of money, how do I pay my bill? Uh, I have credit card debt, how do I pay that down? I'm more focused on a lot of people just don't have any money. Right, 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 right. right so right. they don't really, can't really make any decisions. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to go back and say if I was uh, dealing with school age, particularly college age kids, it really would be about, okay, there's a difference between knowledge and skills. You know, I look at someone like you, I don't know much about your background, your education, but you have the skill to capture an audience in the fourth largest city in the United States. Right, right. And, and that skill that you have can be used in other um, venues as well. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't have to be radio. And so it's just a matter of using what you have and using it in different environments and figure out where do you get traction. Right. Mm. So you're looking at him, how can you help him become a millionaire? <laughs> what you know right now? <laughs> Again, Your it, comment would assume that I was not a millionaire already. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's my the audience knows you're a millionaire. <laughs> 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 okay, Whatever. Okay, me then, guys. I'm poor. I'm a J Mac. So wait, how did you become a millionaire? Okay, that's there you go. Uh, so, long story short, you know, I kind of did it the traditional way of, uh, you know, I went to college and then I decided to become a doctor and I went to medical school um, and then I became an emergency physician, but that's not really the way that I built most of my wealth. It's really through owning businesses, right, um, because, you know, even as a doctor, and believe it or not, most radio listeners may not believe this, most doctors are not millionaires. Um, they may I make a... They make a lot of money, but they also have a, a lifestyle that they have to maintain that shows that, hey, I've made it with, you know, big homes, expensive cars, kids in private school. And so at the end of the day, there's not a lot of money left over. Um, and so the key, one of the things I talk about in my book is that you need to have ownership. No matter what you're oh. doing, you need to have ownership. You can't just be an employee of a business. God, dog, so, that's my first mistake right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm getting close in. Okay. What's, what's the next bullet point, point Paul? <laughs> I'm taking notes on that, too. Next. <laughs> Hear him out, Jay. Hear him out. Okay. You're not saying you're a loser. <laughs> He's not and, finished yet. Go and, ahead, and, sir. And, and I say millionaire because I think a lot of people in their mind believe that, okay, millionaire is where I want to be because that's what it means to be successful. Mm -hmm. But what's more important to me is that people reach whatever level of success is meant for them. Yeah. Maximize their financial potential based on the skills that they have. You, can't, you can't really walk in someone else's shoes. Okay. You can, only, you can only be you. <laughs> what would be your suggestion to some somebody, somebody young Boda, I mean young Jazz just starting out, uh, straight out of college, Trying to make it happen. Two she, years out of college. She Three is years. she is a millennial. Don't get offended. I'm just saying. I don't know. Uh, but she's on her rise. What would it, at least give her like three main things? And, and and I know there's so much you can learn out the book. And I would. By the way, the book is uh, out real quick. Where can they get the book? Where's it out at? 
Uh, the book went on sale yesterday, and you can get it on Amazon, BarnesandNobles.com, and iTunes. All right. Give her, give her one or two gems out of your book that can help her get on this fast track of wealth. Fast track. <laughs> well, I think she did the first thing. Um, according to statistics, you know, African Americans have a one in fifty-two chance of becoming a millionaire without a college education. Wow! The fact that you went to college improved your chances to one in sixteen, and uh -oh. so that's the first thing. What? One in sixteen? Right. Wow! And so, you know, you're at a young age. I see you in radio. The advice I would give you is get out. <laughs> 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 no, but you're you're learning. After getting out, though, no, no, but you're learning skills that are valuable. Radio is valuable. People listen to the radio every day, but that gives you the opportunity to say, well, what can I produce? Right? The money is really in the producing and the production of other talent, or even of your own programs. So that's the the second thing that I would tell you to do. And then the third thing I would tell you to do is your network. Your network determines your net worth, meaning you have to surround yourself with people who are striving to be like you or wanted to be a millionaire you have here to, we go hatta right. <laughs> hatta should be a mentor for you as he is whether he knows it or not <laughs> All right, Paul. We appreciate you so much, man. No, thank you for having uh, me. This, on. this is this is this is cool. Like I said, we I, I stopped at first when I saw the second part. I was like, I was just like, oh, how to become a millionaire? Because I love talking about money. Sure. I think they all, everybody in this room, pretty much knows that. I love talking about money. I like talking about how to make money grow. I like talking about how money you can make it work for you when you're not around. Uh, your money to me, it should be doing things when you ain't doing things and, sh and revenue streams. I'm into all that stuff. Sure. So I'm always a big proponent of information that teaches you how to keep it, how to make it. Sure. And, 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 and of course, starting off at some level, because everybody, like you said, they, they don't start off with a million dollars. Right. We all start off broke. So sometimes the first step is, let's figure out why we continue to be broke and we can't pay our bills and all these little things. You know, because I start off just getting me savings bonds back in the day. Sure. Not that I suggest that to everybody, that was just my way to start saving money. Sure. But that's why I appreciate books with this kind of information in it. And it's always great to see somebody of color make these books too because I think what we lack is seeing people like you who are millionaires, who have been in a business world, who have succeeded. We don't see an, we don't see enough in them. There's not enough stories done. There's not sure. we don't see it. Right. Bottom line, we don't see it. So on that, I definitely gotta shake your hand and commend you on that. Uh, thank I you. appreciate it man. I do I really do I appreciate it. it. So Paul, <laughs> are you still practicing? Yeah, I'm still a practicing physician. Um, you know, I work probably two or three times a month seeing patients. Again, what uh, Hatta said about uh, diverse revenue streams, and also, you know, it took me a while to acquire my skills, and I don't want to lose them uh, mm -hmm. by not using them. That's right. Do you miss it, doing it full time? Uh, no, I don't miss doing it full time. I think, you know, I got into medicine because I want to help people, and I just realized, you know, me writing the book is another way that I could help people, is that, you know, people are, so many people are, you know, stressed, about finances and so if I can just give a, a different perspective and maybe make them think about things differently just become aware in a different way mm -hmm. hopefully I can transform their lives in that way okay and we're talking about different revenue streams now I, I have a couple buddies who are physicians and you, you mentioned your ER physician sure that they've been telling me about you know investing in these ER clinics that pop up everywhere you know right down the street <laughs> sure. is, is that something you did too to uh, yeah, so it's really having ownership of your business. So I'm an emergency physician by trade, and so we had the opportunity, me and my partners had an opportunity to open up what we call freestanding ERs right. uh, that give us as physicians an opportunity to own our craft and deliver medicine the way that we feel is best for our patients. And so, again, it goes back to the ownership, is that as, an, as a physician I can work as an employee for someone or I can take uh, uh, command of my specialty and go into business for myself. Mm, cool. I have one more question. Yes, so, as someone who wants to be a millionaire, what are some of your like millionaire habits on the daily, like as far as your lifestyle? Do you do yoga? Do you like detox? Yeah. Do you not eat what? out? Or? No, no, no. I think the most important thing is, and particularly for people that come from underprivileged, underprivileged communities, is that you need to develop a passion for reading. Mm. Because I told you that your, net, your network uh, determines your net worth. Well, many times you don't have the resources or the funds to meet different people. But you can definitely get a book that expands your, your mind in a way like, oh, my goodness, I may never meet this person, but at least I have some insight into what they think and what they do. 
on how they became successful. So that's what I do. I read every day. Even as successful as I've been saying, okay, I'm a doctor, most people shut it down right there. I figure, well, what else is inside me that I can develop if I can just get exposure to a different group of people? Mm. You know, even just sitting in this room, it, it just sends off a different uh, inspiration to me. It's like, okay, how else can I do this? What other mediums can I use to get my message out? One more time, Paul. Tell them where to get the book, the name of the book, everything, so we can make sure they have it. And then if they, and if you're on social media as well, because you know this is the generation of social media. Sure. Uh, the name of the book is How to Become a Millionaire. If a black guy can do it, so can you. And it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, as well as iTunes. And uh, you can follow me at uh, Instagram, Millionaire Black Guy, uh, as well as Facebook, Millionaire Black Guy. There it is, right there, Paul. Thank you again, my man. Thank you. All right.